So it's great to look back 25 years at the discovery of the gene. I guess the real question is, what about looking forward? I've never been more optimistic or hopeful in my entire career. We are really at the precipice, and it, I think the advances that we're going to see in the next five to ten years are just going to be exponential. The rate at which the discovery process is moving forward here, and the fact that it's now clearly a combination of industry and academic research labs is unlike anything that I've ever seen before in the CF field. Now we know what can be achieved and that tells us where, where we need to go. So I really see the discovery of the gene, understanding the protein, understanding how the cell processes the protein, um, and the variations in the protein from all the different CF mutations that we now are aware of. Um, these are all really, really tightly linked and continued success in developing therapies is going to be that, that tight um, understanding between protein structure, function, cell biology, and drug therapy. The results from the trial that uh, were announced this summer um, basically demonstrated clearly that we can do the same thing in F508 Dell patients. Um, the results showed an improvement in FEV1, showed an improvement in how frequently patients were sick. Now it's not to the levels that we saw with Ivacaftor and G551D patients, but we, we're not surprised about that because we knew this was going to be a harder nut to crack. Um, the reason we're so excited though is obviously this is a much bigger group of patients that we have a chance to impact. Probably Ivacaftor could help other mutations from class 3 and class 4 and maybe can be even combined with a corrector for Delta A508 or an agent that will promote read through for nonsense mutations. We've got about 2,000 different mutations in this one gene that can cause disease. And we know very clearly that one size won't fit all. So a compound that works for one individual or one mutation may not for another, but the fact that all these other drugs are in the pipeline now means that we're probably going to keep hitting more and more and more of these patients. So, um, and, and getting us to the point where we're going to be really talking about semantics to say we have a cure versus we have a, a treatment for it. And uh, we're, we're making you know, really big strides and, and I think that's incredibly exciting. We know we're not done yet. We know we need to get stronger agents. We know we want to increase to patients who just have one F508 Dell mutation. But we've been waiting for this for a long time, right? It, it couldn't be more excited. The most common group treat the underlying cause, see a difference in how they're doing. It's exactly what we were hoping for. So I'm quite hopeful because uh, now the high throughput screening and the, the drug libraries, they're all available. And then it just uh, requires a uh, magic moment to identify this particular drug. Obviously now there's hope that Lumacaftor and Ivacaftor will be approved by the Food and Drug Administration for the homozygotes. We're working on the heterozygotes and we've got a pipeline for the, the nonsense mutations. To me the excitement comes from the width uh, and depth of the pipeline in terms of the kinds of agents that we are now looking at. Uh, novel approaches to managing lung infection because that will probably still be an issue for patients even if they have a great uh, corrector potentiator drug um, that improves their CFTR function. I've worked with cystic fibrosis patients for a long time and I, as much as they, I want to see the day when there's a cure for cystic fibrosis. Hopefully the next generation of CF patients won't even have to acknowledge they have CF because we'll have found something to take care of it. My hopes for the future are that we have the magic pills to not just help the 4% of people living with CF, but that we can help everyone living with CF. That might be what it is that keeps me going. It's that hope and passion for the future that we're going to have better treatments and be able to help more people with CF live longer. The hope is to be able to restore enough normal CFTR function in any, any individual who has a mutation. It's given so much hope for the CF community and that inspires me to stay healthy, um, knowing that there are new drugs on the horizon. This is gonna take money, it's gonna take research, but it's possible. It's a, a paradox in that we see how, we, how far we've come and um, yet how slow the process has been. It couldn't move fast enough for, for these kids who were affected. 
Um, so even though we're making great successes, it's, it's, it's still not enough. So it is important as caregivers that we send this message that this is an ongoing process that's going to require steps and um, that we've taken the first couple of steps, but it's not going to be one big step. But you know, I think at some point we're going to look back on the, on the small molecules and say, oh, that was then. Now what are we looking at? And now there are therapies that are treating the actual gene defect and putting in messenger RNA that might be uh, mutation agnostic. And we're looking at, you know, gene editing. So, and looking at stem cells. So we're building a pipeline now, not just for the next two to three years, but we're gonna bring in the tech technologies that are gonna provide a robust pipeline for the next 10 or 15 years so that we can think not just of a daily therapy where you take these pills, but hopefully of a lifetime therapy and a lifetime cure. But the sense now is that we have finally, after 25 years, built upon that fundamental knowledge of what the glitch in that gene is, what its protein product is, what it's supposed to do, how to encourage it to do it, even in somebody with the disease. And now we see, uh, really at long last, a sense uh, that this disease may find its way into the history books. That's the dream. <laughs>